Hey guys, so today I am going to be taking a look at Corora 25. This is a distribution based on Fedora and aims to be a more user-friendly distribution offering a lot more out-of-the-box support for multimedia codecs and um, third-party display drivers and those who require them and so forth. Um, so today I'm just going to be, I've been playing around with it in a virtual machine today and today I'm just going to share some of my thoughts. Now I will give you fair warning, this is not going to be the most positive of um, first impression review videos that I've done. Um, and I do apologize for that because I do try and keep them as positive as possible. But I thought that it might be worthwhile uh, just showing you a few things about uh, Corora um, and uh, and talking through it and um, and, and sharing my, my experiences. But like I say, probably not going to be the most positive of reviews. And that is in no small part down to the fact that Fedora is a really good distribution and has, has thoroughly impressed me over the past few years. And if a distribution is going to be based on Fedora, I expect it to be uh, at least as good as Fedora and then some. So I'm going to be comparing this not only to Fedora, but to Fedora plus the RPM repositories, which I expect every home user would install by default. And it's not even that difficult these days. So if it's aiming to be more user friendly than Fedora, it's got a lot to live up to. So um, it's been around a while as well. This distribution has been around since I think it's 2011. And it has been based on Gentoo, but it's recently been uh, based on Fedora. And does it sh uh, show up every six months? It l yeah, it looks about so. Maybe three times a year. Two, two to three times a year. So it doesn't necessarily have the rigid release schedule that perhaps um, uh, Ubuntu has. So I've tried uh, to install a number of the desktop environments that it comes with. Um, the GNOME one didn't work. It just booted me into a blank screen. Uh, I gotta say the Cinnamon, I mean, it didn't look that great. I mean, it was fine and it loaded up all right. But one of the things about a lot of Cinnamon themes that really do bother me is that, you know, the text in the task bars and on the menu and all that kind of stuff always seems to be in bold. Not in not in like KDE or XFCE or Mate, but just in Cinnamon, a lot of the text on the on the taskbar seems to be arbitrarily in bold for some reason. So it comes with a few things out of the box. As you can see here, it comes with uBlock um, installed uh, out of the box, which is an interesting uh, an interesting choice there. Um, what else do we have? So here the about page. It explains what it's what it's really all about. Is this the about page? Give it the uh, Give it an overview. Here we go, and it does. T it talks about um, that it just aims to be a more user-friendly, uh, better out-of-the-box experience um, version of Fedora, which is fine. And it talks about default applications. Now, in interestingly enough, it, it talks about it that it's it, you know that it's, it's fostered a decent amount of choice into uh, a decent amount of thought into the software choices. But if I look up onto the menus here. For a start, in the in the favorites, which uh, these are the default favorites, I believe, you've got uh, Appa and Discover, which are two software management um, tools, um, as well as Contact. For some reason, I guess. I mean, I'm not that it shouldn't be there, but that's a bit of a strange one to have up in the favorites without an email client to go with it. Okay, so what? Yeah, one of the issues with the software selection that I got to say I wasn't too too big a fan of. Is it comes with so much software? I mean, look at that. Like, it doesn't. It's not even easy to find LibreOffice. If you go Office, it's not. It's it's, it's right down there at the bottom. LibreOffice Calc. You have to scroll down. I don't know. What's the Civ editor or the Civ editor as well? So, this might be a KDE thing, but it definitely doesn't seem like this is intuitive to new people. Like, it comes with another web browser. It comes with Conqueror web browser. It comes with Cupzilla. So you've got three browsers right off the bat. Um, you've got Chococ, Chococ, and um, Corbird as well. So I think, yeah, you've got... Nope, no, oh no, Corbird was just... Yeah, my bad. No, Corbird was, uh, was in the software center. But um, this is the software center that I have been using, and this is the one that seems to work the best. Um, Here we go. Um, but even that's not particularly amazing. Like it, it lists everything in alphabetical order, which given how long the lists are, I can't necessarily say that's 
the move I would have gone with. Um, but all in all, um, you know, you can you can uh, you can search for stuff relatively easily. There don't appear to be very many written or uh, you know sort of explained uh, instructions for this, but it's I suppose it's intuitive enough that it can that it can uh, you know that you can use common sense to get through it. But this uh, app is not as good by quite a margin as the GNOME Software Center app. Um, can you? Uh, oh, but you can install the GNOME Software Center app, so that's 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 good. Uh, but it doesn't appear to be as good as the GNOME Software Center app. And uh, the other one is uh, this appears to be much more of a package manager uh, type of affair. taken a while to load up I think oh there it is uh, yeah so this is a it seems to be more of a package manager kind of affair um, but I have had a lot of problems with this as you can see here so again somewhat off-putting to newcomers now I did update this distribution completely and restart before um, before doing this and, and and I've been playing around with it for a lot of the day but I do have to say it does seem like Fedora plus RPM Fusion um, with 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 maybe not as good software selection, to be honest. And I so I don't like being um, so down on a distribution because um, because this is all a contribute um, this is all contributing to the you know the free software ecosystem. But um, even for new Linux users, I got it. I I would advise moving towards um, upstream Fedora. And I suppose this to me has sort of begged the, the question now. There used to be a time when newbie friendly distributions were really important. Linux Mint being the chief of them, they took out some important, you know, they, they, they developed on some really good bug fixes on Ubuntu that, um, that really helped me out. Uh, and they polished up the Ubuntu distribution in a way that as a newcomer I was, uh, I found a lot more appealing as well. Uh, but nowadays, as time goes on, as years go by, and this was probably the best part of ten years ago, maybe not, not you know, eight, six, seven, eight years ago. Um, but now the Ubuntu's and the Fedoras of this world have, I, I would say, they've nearly caught up, um, and they are quite user friendly. Um, and again, I, you know, I could, I could pick whole, a lot of holes in them. Uh, but considering that the progress they've made over the over the past decade has been outstanding, and I would say that. In a lot of cases, there is the the idea of the newbie-friendly, out-of-the-box distribution is not as relevant as it used to be because it's so much easier to install third-party codecs, and uh, you know there's there's a lot less getting in the way, and uh, you know, and even with Fedora installing the RPM Fusion uh, repos and all that kind of stuff, it's a lot smoother than it was um, even a couple of years ago. Um, but then, that being said, this, you know, a, a, a more straightforward user-friendly... Because the thing is with soft, uh, Fedora is they make some pretty decisive software choices. They don't, for example, include Chromium in their default system repositories, which is uh, a big thing for me. It's something that I consider to be uh, deeply significant. That being said, the RPM, the free uh, open-source RPM uh, fusion... Uh, repository seems to seems to include that now so it's uh and i think i'm pretty sure you can install chromium i will just double check that you can uh you can pop chromium oh hang on a minute there is no hmm really I think it even says it it does say it I'm I'm almost certain it does say well you can you can there's GNU Ice Cat and there's Midori Cupzilla there's the Tor browser launcher doesn't appear to be Chromium that is something so I don't really know what that's all about either um so I think that's about it for the first impressions um video today again apologize for it being as negative as as it is i but i do have to say i would i'd go back to fedora on this one um 
because I think it seems to have it seems to have um, covered the bases that it needs to now. Um, but that's just me. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below because I'd really like a, uh, like more of a, a you know a, a second opinion on this, and I'd like to know if any of you guys have had uh, better luck with Corora than I have. Um, I, I got to say I'm in two minds um, about whether or not I want, really want to put this video on the on the channel because it is you know I don't like putting negative reviews up and I don't like putting stuff that's, uh, that I'm a little bit too critical of because like I say it all feeds into the, the open source ecosystem but I think that it does raise a point now is you know has Fedora become user friendly enough that um, user friendly respins of it are not necessarily needed. Um, I think what could really benefit from Fedora is a long term support release or um, or, or possibly even a rolling release, or both. You know, instead of having the six monthly release cycle, why not have a rolling release and then an LTS release? Who knows? I don't know. Uh, but that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.